Hey guys, it's Swilly from SwartyPanda.com. Um, today I have a pretty important, but it's also very heavy topic. Um, so I understand if you want to skip it, um, feel free to do so. Um, but this might be like a good video to maybe review every once in a while. Um, not just for myself, but for I guess like anybody that's close to me. Um, any anyone that that needs it, because um, this is a very it's a very tough to topic to talk about. I don't see a lot of people, um, any of the big, well, any YouTuber really talking about it. Um, but at least not uh, related to like trading. Um, so today I want to talk about how to overcome uh, trading uh, addiction and um, trading depression, and, like any of the like the bad stuff like that uh, happens to traders like mentally. Um, especially when you experience like heavy losses like kind of all of a sudden and all at once now um, I guess like the past year like ever since uh, March 2020 or so uh, a lot of people have been interested in this space and um, they actually uh, they were able to make good money one because like volatility was so high so for example if you just like sold put options on like any stock that like that might have been interesting to you chances are you, you probably made money and then um the, and then once like volatility like contracted then people started buying like uh you know call options or or put options or whatever and um because there was so much movement that and also because like the implied volatility was after it contracted um it allowed people to to make a lot of money in a, like a short amount of time and then like kind of fast forward to uh, March 2021 um, even though in terms of percentages uh, you know like this pullback that we um, experienced in uh, certain um, tech and EV names um, it wasn't as as big but I think um, some people got caught uh, including myself uh, like for example um, like in previous videos I, I talked about um, some of my NEO trades um, I, I still like Neo, but I think I may like in hindsight I might have bought too many um, calls, uh, and then also I guess at the same time um, it was just like kind of bad timing on my part. Uh, where the the good thing is I, I had um, there were diagonals, so I had like some I sold some uh, I guess like, kind of like calls against the position to help reduce the cost basis. But there's two things um, that I think hurt a lot of people. Uh, first, the delta, obviously, because uh, you know when the like like for example, if I'm if you're uh, long a a call option and you know the, the stock price tanks, then you're out that way. And then the second thing is like it's a little weird where the uh, implied volatility and the VIX in general, um, it's kind of low. It's low-ish compared to what we had um, last year in March 2020, so so that also helped hurt uh, hurt, hurt uh, me and probably a lot of other uh, traders as well. Because let's say when you're buying, uh, if you decide to buy calls, it's always better to try to um, buy when implied volatility is is at a low point. And I, and I thought I did buy. Uh, at a low point but it got even lower unfortunately so like it that's like a double whammy um so i was actually up money on the position but i didn't you know in hindsight i wish i i uh, had sold some to because i wasn't expecting like a uh, a downdraft to be that painful and the only th good thing that i did is i i don't generally use a lot of um margin because like the call options itself is already like a form of leverage so there's no need to to um kind of juice it uh but i think what's happening is uh some people they they might be using um either margin debt or a portfolio margin or span margin or whatever and they're using it to kind of get even more leverage uh just buying like out of the money um, options and that I think that's what's hurting a lot of um, people uh, so imagine this like like even for people that are generally very careful um, such as myself um, 
I, I bought like out of the money. I mean, I'm sorry. I, I bought um further out in time uh, options. So basically, uh, um, at least one year of a uh, premium, um, and it still hurts. Uh, but it's not at the point where I want to just like um quit or, or do something bad. Um, there were a few days where I've, like my like I had a really bad temper. I was just like tossing things around. Um, and I don't like that part of by myself, but where, like, I, I shouldn't let my portfolio performance like affect like other parts of my life. Um, so, I, and I think, um, I guess, like, what what brought this uh, topic about was, you know, I was um, talking with um, some people that are close to me, and they they also like, uh, they they were really hurt, um, even though like, like. Um, the move itself in most most uh, indices um, wasn't that bad, but I think you know after like talking um, to the person, uh, you know, then you first start finding out they're buying like out of the money, um, shorter term uh, calls because um, like they were kind of anticipating maybe like either good earnings or something good to happen, and um, I think they, they they probably got caught up, um, I guess, in in the FOMO. And and now like you know the, you know at this point there's really nothing that person can really do except just just try to recover whatever premium um, that they paid for for the options um, and then also you know just like reading um, various uh, you know either on Twitter or Reddit like some people I mean they they really got wrecked um, and it's just terrible like. People losing um, thousands. I've even read about like a few um, people like losing like hundreds and thousands of dollars, and it's just like it's a little crazy because that's like either a down payment or a house, or depending on where you live, it could actually be um, a good portion of your house. And um, I guess like I don't know how to exactly solve all um, these issues, but let's just say like you you had a um a series of really bad trading days um i would suggest like um if you don't already have them like just follow your stop losses um and then also like I, i've talked about this before where you should already have um like some trailing stop losses look if they're hit um just get out um you can always uh, reestablish your positions um maybe at a low price um, if, if you choose to do so um, like f for example for myself uh, with my new positions I was able to sell some uh, cover calls and then I, I kind of stopped because like they're at the point where like selling cover calls won't make sense because like at that point um, I'm not even uh, breaking even I think it's better just to uh, take some of the pain up front and sell some of my higher uh, higher strike uh, calls just let's just take them off um, and then like some of the ones that that are like close to being in the money uh, I'll probably keep those and then I'll sell color calls against like those the lower um, cost basis uh, long dated options so for example um, if you're in that kind of position as well that's uh, something that you can consider doing or if like the implied volatility is enough and if you have enough cash um, you could maybe think about um, maybe selling a cash secured put if if uh, the implied volatility is low enough and if you want to like maybe stay in the position um, and maybe you want a, a dollar cost averaging in it really depends on your situation um, or uh, like if you're position is at a point where it's that bad where you just have to kind of just blow out blow out everything um, and then like take some time off uh, that that's another thing that you can do um, because this happened to me um, a long time ago where I was you know training strangles on like gold futures and I, I was in way over my head because um, even at that at that time like one it's just selling like one or like a one lot of options on like a gold future it, it's like th that was 
you know, in hindsight, that was like really, really bad because I, I, I wasn't expecting um, a one such a large move, and then I didn't uh, think through like the like how much um, it could go against me, and then and then also um, I guess I at the time had like I didn't fully. Uh, plan out like my trades at that wall like what do I do if it, if it goes I can speed by like 25% or, or more and I didn't um, I, I get this I guess at the time I was pretty lucky um, where I was able to to kind of uh, like trade around the positions using like the future itself and, and it was just like a, a big mess um, so I chopped like a, a big loss into like a somewhat acceptable loss but it was still pretty painful um, and then that's why um, you know, like now I'm a little bit like more careful like I, I try to um, like like periodically uh, review your trades um, I know sometimes like in a, in a down move like it, it it happens so fast that you don't have enough time to react um, so let me just like try to recap it so it doesn't turn into like this big babble fest. Um, like one, uh, try to um, remain calm. Uh, just like reduce either your size or just like reduce the amount of positions. Because like if say if you have like your 50 random like stocks and like options and, and things like it's really hard to 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 see like what's going on. So like first like if it's like a really big loser. Um, I would suggest like just taking it like early take take the pain don't rush out to like get rid of your winners well if, if you even have any um, if your portfolio is all red that that there's that's like another um, issue you're probably not diversified enough um, so I guess like first get rid of like the, the losers um, I know I know it's it sucks but at least you can claim those against um, any winners that you had before or like any future winners so that at least you have like some a uh, little bit of like tax liability reduction um, if, you, if you even have any um, and then second uh, try to see if there's any other opportunities to offset against your losses so like right now it looks like people are rotating into like I guess like so-called safer stocks which um, it's, it's hard to find right now so I think we're, we're stuck in a tricky situation where uh, a lot of stocks are still pretty expensive um, and then also like the dividend paying stocks like their the yields aren't like so good um, but at least it, it's something so you have like some income coming in to kind of offset the losses and then also like the the uh, implied volatilities and some of the dividend paying stocks like it, it's really hard to sell good juicy like put options um, you kind of have to wait for like some bad news to, to happen and then sell the cash secure put so at least um, you might have a chance at, at buying a stock and then eventually getting some dividends that way but while you wait um, you can get some um, put premiums coming in or uh, again as, as I mentioned before like selling some cover calls against uh, some of your bad positions to see if maybe there's a chance that you can at least break even and um, reduce some of your losses uh, and that that's worked on only a few of the names so far because um, I still think like 2021 should still be like a net positive um, I guess like at this point you can use this as a uh, one a learning experience and then also kind of like um, try to find out like where your your pain point is like um, in terms of like like loss so if you know obviously if you're taking you know like a 50 percent loss or more you know you know you have my um uh sympathies because i've that's happened to me in the past and I've, I've i've vowed never to like let that happen again because that's like my kind of like my mental breaking point like losing half your money is just like ridiculous even lo losing like um one quarter of your original um investment or trade is like it's really painful so I try to keep it even uh, less than that um, whenever possible. So um, again, like just dealing with like the 
like the after effects is really horrible because then it affects your, like your future trading and your future um like income streams so maybe consider like uh building on like a bedrock of like dividend paying or like interest paying um into either stocks or etfs first and then um once you you know you, you try to like repair whatever mess that you have in your portfolio now and then um take a break and then like start slowly moving into like more like like dividend and cash paying positions so again um i, I think for most people like it, it makes more sense to have um dividend paying stocks and then selling um premium against it so like it's a combination of like what i've talked about before like the uh dividend paying stocks and like the wheel of fortune strategy and that'll that that's still pretty good returns um because i think some people are just like they have just too much fomo and they see a lot of people like buying call options and things like that which you know it's fine for like a small part of your portfolio but you can't make that like like your your go-to strategy because then you're gonna get uh, again um march still at the 21 it shouldn't have been that bad for that for that many people but um again uh you know like the past is the past just we have to like put together a plan to like fix that um so you know hopefully that helps because i i know like going through like when you get caught at the moment um also like maybe reduce some of your um uh i guess like social media interactions because like, i guess like people get kind of caught up into like what some of the big influencers are saying and then they they get caught up in the hype and all that stuff and then i think what you can do is just reduce that or maybe even like eliminate it uh, together just take like a um, i guess how many time that you need like maybe a day or maybe even a week uh, just like get away from like the social media and then also the uh, maybe just like take a break from the markets after you've cleaned up your portfolio a bit um i know it, it sucks good to take all that amount of like um pain at once like financial pain and then also like emotional pain um so you have to find like a i guess like your your, your stopping out point um first and then and then go from there uh you know i i wish you luck um if if um that that happened to you and um and then you can kind of like maybe refer to this video again like like if you're ever in a trading slump or like you you feel like you're you're not performing because like you're just you're just you're, you're probably gambling um at that point and you have to kind of like just like take the tough medicine like take the loss um you know review your actions review your trades and then see where you went wrong and then like just go from there uh, and it really sucks that um you know for some people you, you might have to like go back to work or like or even like just try to find like a second shift at another job and then try to reaccumulate your your capital um you know it, it really sucks to, to talk about it because it's really like some people feel like really embarrassed and they feel like really bad and that kind of stuff but look like you have to kind of move on uh with your life um so you know hopefully um this wasn't like that bad and i try not to like to to be like do too much like finger wagging you know because it's a tough topic uh for some traders um but um hopefully you know in, in future videos like it'll be a little a little bit more um uh, more fun uh when like, i guess like like hopefully the market will move in like in your direction whether you're long or short whatever uh and i, and I hope you make some good gains um uh you know get some more uh, dividends in get more uh, option premium in um and still like you know, you're, there's still a good chance that you can still turn it around um for for uh, tax year 2021 um I, I still think that there should be a lot of like good things that can come this year uh so uh yeah um guys let me know if um what you what you think about these type of topics if it, is it like too heavy um if you want me to cover like other things like i'll be happy to do so um so if you if, if this helped um please uh 
consider giving a like um, sharing with people that you know also might be going through some tough times in their training and then also you know if you can subscribe that'd be great as well um, so thank you um, please take care of yourself now